Today we're going to clean the carburetor on a 2018 6 horsepower Yamaha 4 stroke. Let's take a look at what's ahead of us. So with the cover removed, let's look at what needs to be disconnected to get this carburetor out. So we've got the main throttle body connector. Um, and this has a rubber cap. And the rubber cap, if you put it on to its full length, it goes right up and touches. So you've got kind of an automatic mark where that goes. We've got the uh, choke lever, and this will just pop out down below, pop right out. So that one's easy. We have a hose here, and we have a hose back there with just spring clips pulling them on. And then inside the air box, um, well, we've got two screws holding the carburetor on as well as the air box. And this one is uh, easy to see. And this one, so again, this one uh, is accessed through this rubber grommet. Uh, I had to stop filming and Use a flat blade to get it out. Um, and there you can see the head of the second bolt. And that's all there is to getting the carburetor loose so it can be removed. So let's look at uh, what tools we'll need. So for tools, we're going to need a number two Phillips for the uh, throttle linkage to loosen that up. We will need uh, just a flathead screwdriver to help pry off hoses and to, um, well, who knows what. <laughs> the two main mounting bolts for the carburetor, they are a five millimeter uh, Allen wrench requirement. I have this guy that came with uh, some furniture and it just happens to be the five millimeter. So this would be really handy for this job won't have to use a traditional Allen wrench and uh, a pair of pliers. And then probably some needle nose pliers to get at that uh, clamp. Also note, uh, before we remove the carburetor, there is a gasket and a spacer and a second gasket. So it's important that those be put back on properly. Gasket, spacer, gasket. All right, let's get started. Oh yeah, one other thing. We'll need the flat blade to uh, screw this out. This to, this will uh, allow us to drain the gas out of the carb. Oh yeah, <laughs> another oh yeah. Then at the front of the motor, make sure you've got the fuel shut off in the shut off position, fuel selector switch, I should say. So with the fuel selector switch in the off position, first thing I'm going to do is drain the uh, float bowl. I've got some absorbent pads designed for uh, the absorption of petroleum products. Right there. And you can see the fuel coming out. So I'm taking out the first spring hose clamp. And when they're off, you can move them there's always a little ridge that helps the hose seal to the device. And you can squeeze these guys really tight and then get them over that ridge, get them out of the way. Notice that uh, I shut the fuel drain valve. All of that fuel absorbed in the top layer of uh, this absorbent material. Um, I like to grab a little video of, so we can see some spacing here and the relative position, again, that position is the exact length of where that uh, rubber thimble goes back on. So that will be a good approximate place for that to be. Next, we'll uh, loosen this uh, screw and remove the lever. So I found that I wasn't able to pull the rod out even with full extension here. So I took a, um, flat blade screwdriver and very carefully pried up the lever. It just snaps in right there. 
And then now we can just take that all the way out. I'd like to snap some photos along the way so I can remember orientation. So let's take this hose off. I did get a little, actually I'm doing this for the camera. I just took it off just before this and I did get fuel out. So again, make sure to keep some absorbent material below your carb. All right, next we'll get the inner fuel line. There we go. Get this guy off. So rather than try to get that spring clamp off, um, I'm gonna pull the carburetor first and then we'll take it off after the carburetor is removed. Now the carburetor is loose and we can get at this clamp here easily. So now with that second hose off, we are completely loose. And again, uh, make sure you've got gasket, spacer, gasket on this side. And then here in the air box, it's fallen down there. That's an O-ring that goes right here in the opening of the air box. So next we want to remove the jets and clean them. There are tiny holes. Uh, the center conductor of, uh, if you got any old TV cable, center conductor works pretty, pretty good. But just see if you can see daylight through. If there are anything in them at all, um, clean it out and then give them a shot with carburetor cleaner. This one came from right there. So we got to pull this guy out, uh, take the float bowl off. Next, we're going to remove the bottom of the float bowl. Uh, one fastener's out. Now we're going to take this one out. So here are the bottom of the float bowls removed. Uh, one thing when you have this off, this is the uh, fuel drain, uh, kind of a needle valve, kind of a plug, uh, but it actually drains out that hole. So when you back that off to drain your bowl, make sure that you're catching the, the fuel coming out this side. There's a little spring right on the end. Um, I should have got a video before I took it off. It's actually sitting in right, right about there. You can barely see it. But no, notice this is knurled on one end. You, you want to move it towards the knurl. You don't want to drag that knurl through the uh, uh, little strong backs here. So the main jet takes a uh, flat blade, but it's really skinny. I had to sacrifice an old screwdriver and make the blade even thinner. The good news, I think I found my problem. There is no daylight coming through here. This comes from here. So now the main jet, you can see the light coming through. Pretty small orifice, but uh, we couldn't see daylight when we started. Obviously some fuel was getting through, but... Uh, oh yeah, and I like to wear gloves working with brake cleaner because it's really tough on your hands and it's not real friendly to latex either. <laughs> so here's the spring assist on the float bowl, and I found that the uh, uh, easiest way to get this on is to uh, put this little square bend around the, the carburetor body, put it on the end of the um, pin, and then very carefully wind it around, and there is a, hardly see it, but there's a little uh, nub, and then the spring goes inside that nub. That's basically the only thing that keeps it from going side to side. To reassemble the uh, float bowl, this little cutout here goes, compensates for that. So it goes on like so. So here we are with the bowl back on. Remember that the seal there is uh, basically a custom shaped O-ring. So tighten your fasteners just snug and then slowly tighten back and forth uh, to keep everything nice and even. All right, so time to put the car back on. You remember that the last hose we took off was this guy. We'll get the air box out of the way and we'll attach this guy to that guy. 
So I've decided rather than hook this tube up, I put the O-ring back here. It's kind of an egg shape, so don't let that fool you. Um, so we've got that back in place. We're gonna put some, the two studs through, fit the carb up, and kind of hold those tight so the O-ring doesn't move, and then we'll fit that hose. So we've got the carburetor back in place. I couldn't film doing it because I, I'm by myself with just two hands, but the, uh, you remember the O-ring here, uh, the O-ring was a little bit oversized. I don't know if that's from being heated up, uh, many times, but, uh, that ended up being really difficult to get that to stay in the groove. So I put a little bit of, uh, uh, mercury grease. This stuff just to, to make it stick. And then again, critical here, gasket, spacer, gasket, and then just the two bolts. And there's uh, washers uh, underneath both. So I did, as I was doing all this, I did connect this hose back here and got the spring clamp up on it. So next we'll put this guy back on and start connecting the linkage. So the main fuel line. Now we're gonna reconnect the choke cable and we'll uh, check the knob here. Yep, that works fine. So now we connect up the uh, main throttle body linkage. I loosened this bolt and remember this kind of snaps in here. So we got it lined up. I'll just pop it in. There we go. So if you remember um, with this rubber thimble on all the way, the adjustment original was just to bring us just up to and touching there. All right, quick final check. We've got the throttle linkage back where it was set before. Um, we reconnected the choke cable and it's just a spring load from below. Just the tension of the cable that keeps it there. We've got one mounting screw and the second mounting screw in there. This plug has to come off. And we've got this fuel line and that fuel line. And that's it. Everything's back the way it should be. I'm going to, since I'm using the onboard tank, I'm going to pump it back up because we're going to test it here in a minute. I gotta turn the fuel back on. So I turned the fuel back on. Here we go. All right, nice and solid. All right, let's get it in the water and test it. One last thing though, let's put this plug back in the air box. All right, now we're ready to go. So the original problem was the motor would start if you had uh, throttle in start position and it would run there and faster, but anytime you went below that start position mark on the throttle, um, it would just lean out and die. So obviously the problem was with the idle circuit. I put the motor back together as shown in the videos, uh, did the exact same thing. So I pulled the car back off, pulled the uh, idle jet back off and used a little wire off a wire brush to carefully uh, open it up completely and give it an extra long soak with carburetor cleaner and uh, I think that should do the trick. Here we go. So thanks for watching. The six horse is gonna go on the dinghy on Mother Ocean. It's a high field, 10 foot dinghy. It's got a 20 horsepower Mercury two stroke on it now. It's just way too much motor. It's an old motor, probably 25 years old. So you know how heavy those were back then. It's just not much fun to, to manhandle that motor. So this new uh, 
2018, fairly new, um, Yamaha six horse, four stroke should do the job. All right, thanks for watching.